This is a submission from Mr. Sato, and Mr. Sato is trying to tune his copter. And what he's done is he has turned his PIDs all the way down. Well, his IDs all the way down. His P is at 4, and his I's are at 0, and his D's are at 0. And he says, look what happens. Well, I don't know what happens, but let's find out what happens. There's oscillation. There's oscillation. First, we'll look at the gyros. And we'll see if the gyros are noisy. The gyros are not particularly noisy, but we can definitely see these oscillations. We can see from the gyros that the oscillations are primarily on roll. There is some activity on pitch, but notice that on roll specifically, we get these very regular oscillations. And this kind of regular oscillation is usually tied to the P term, depending on the frequency. Lower frequency oscillations might be I term, but this is probably P term. And it's on roll, most likely because on many copters, the roll axis has the weight more centralized, and therefore the P gain is more effective on that axis because that axis is less inherently damped than the pitch axis where the weight is more spread out. We can see here that the P term is essentially completely out of phase with the gyro. The gyro is the yellow line, the P term is the red line, and they're basically always perfectly out of phase. What I think is happening here is that your P gain is too low and that the P term is not authoritative enough to affect the changes that the PID controller is trying to make in the a copter. You say that you had prop wash oscillation, that's what it sounds like you're describing, uh, but you thought P was too high and you lowered it. You get these big slow oscillations. So what, what's happened is, lower, obviously lowering the P gain was not the right thing to do to fix these os the prop wash oscillations. Well, actually, the prop wash oscillations are probably gone, but the copter is probably basically unflyable, so that's hardly a good trade-off. Uh, what you're seeing here is a, a, a very low P gain, is how I read this, uh, especially without the I gain to help stabilize the copter. The P term is just not authoritative enough. The copter is wobbling all over the place. If we look at the frequency of these oscillations, we can see that for here we've got 6.5 seconds, and here we've got 6.6 .6 seconds, 6.66. So we're at roughly hmm, 5 to 10 hertz, which is not a very fast oscillation for the uh, P term. So I really do think this is just low P gain. And what you've done is you've tried to get rid of prop wash oscillation by lowering your P gains, but that's not the only way to do it. I mean, there's there may be some prop wash oscillation anywhere you've got flyable P gains. So I think the thing to do is to bring your P gains back up again. Uh, if you're flying Betaflight 271, you may find it effective to turn up the D to get rid of the prop wash oscillation. Uh, Betaflight 27 is the first firmware that I've flown recently where raising D to get rid of prop wash oscillation was really effective. If you check out my series, my practical PID tuning series, you can see how I deal with this in part three, uh, trying to you know work D around to try and get the oscillation where I want it. But remember that there's a certain amount of prop wash oscillation that depending on your setup, you may simply not be able to get rid of. It has to do with primarily with your ESCs and also with your flight control software. Uh, in this case, by using Betaflight 271, you, that's very good. Uh, but depending on what hardware you've got, you may only be able to get it so good. It's not always possible to completely get rid of prop wash oscillation. Alrighty, well, hope that's helpful. Good luck with your tuning. Uh, if you want to, check out my Practical PID tuning series, which I posted to my channel. Uh, I finished posting the last video in the series just uh, this morning, and maybe that'll be helpful as well. Happy flying.